Hello everyone and welcome to the evolution of trust. This is a game slash thought experiment about um, why we trust people or distrust people. It sounded really interesting guys, kind of has a little bit to do with philosophy and a little bit about social science. Anyway, it kind of explains it when you start the game. So let's, uh, let's start the game. During World War I, peace broke out. I've actually heard about this before guys, it's really interesting. It was Christmas 1914 on the Western Front. Despite strict orders not to chillax with the enemy, British and German soldiers left their trenches, crossed no man's land, and gathered to bury their dead, exchange gifts, and play games. Meanwhile, it's 2017, the West has been at peace for decades, and wow, we suck at trust. Surveys show that over the past 40 years, fewer and fewer people say they trust each other. So here's our puzzle. Why, even in peacetime, do friends become enemies, and why, even in wartime, do enemies become friends? I think game theory can help explain our epidemic of distrust and how we can fix it. So to understand all this, let's play a game. Doesn't that sound cool, guys? Like, this is a real story. This actually happened. They got together and they just celebrated Christmas. Even though they're at war with each other, you know, in the trenches and stuff, they still were able to just put those differences aside and have a day of peace. That is just, that is mind-blowing because obviously there's going to be a lot of distrust when you're around your enemy, but nobody fought. They just, they just chillaxed. All right, let's play a game. So, the game of trust. You have one choice. In front of you is a machine. If you put a coin in the machine, the other player gets three coins. Hmm, and vice versa. You both can either choose to cooperate, put in a coin, or cheat and don't put in a coin. So I guess it goes one at a time. So, so you either both put in a coin and you both get coins, or you don't put in a coin, and then you get three coins. So you either make two coins or you make three and the other person makes none. So it would be better if you both did it and then just kept doing it, but we'll see what happens here. All right, so let's say the other player cheats and doesn't put in a coin. What should you do? Hmm, but how am I gonna know if the pl player cheated or not? You know, let's, uh, let's cooperate. I'm gonna be nice. All right, so uh, alas, turning the other cheek just gets you slapped. If you cooperate and they cheat, you lose a coin while they gain three. However, if you both cheat, neither of you gain or lose anything. Therefore, you should cheat. Yes, you're right. But let's say the other person cooperates and puts in a coin. What should you do now? All right, well, I should have cheated. I knew that, guys, but I thought maybe if I cooperated once, it would make him cooperate later or something. I'll cooperate. All right, sure seems like the right thing to do, or is it? Because if you both cooperate, you both give up a coin to gain three plus two and plus two. If you cheat and they cooperate, you gain three coins at their cost of one. Therefore, you should still cheat. Hmm, that's our dilemma. Trust is nice, but it can let others take advantage of you. Sure can, guys, all right. Or shoot you as you come unarmed out of a trench. Sometimes distrust, distrust is rational, but now what happens if we play this game more than once? Okay, so this is where it gets complicated because because obviously now if you're cooperating multiple times, the other person's gonna wanna cooperate back so you get lots of coins, you know? You don't wanna both cheat or nobody gets anything, that's no fun. But then someone always wants to get a one up on the other person. Let's play for real. You'll be playing against five different opponents, each with their own game strategy. With each opponent, you'll play anywhere between three to seven rounds. You won't know in advance when your last round is. Can you trust them or rather can they trust you? Oh, I don't know how this is gonna work. I don't know what to do. Okay, so it's the first move. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, we're playing at least three rounds, so I'm gonna cooperate. Oh, we both put a coin in, yay, we got coins. Good job, buddy. Okay, so this is opponent one of five, total score two. I'm gonna cooperate again. Because mm -hmm. if we keep cooperating, there's no distrust. As soon as you lose that trust, guys, it's really hard to gain back. Everyone knows that if you lose trust with somebody, it's hard to gain back. So keep on cooperating. But as soon as this idiot stops putting coins in, I'm gonna stop putting coins in too and we're gonna be in a bad situation. More coins. I want all the coins. This is good. This is great. One more. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. I don't know how many times we're gonna do this, but I'm making a lot of money. Goodbye. See, so together, we work together, you know, and we made 10 coins each. Great. There was no distrust, no reason for anything bad to happen. But this guy's wearing a different hat, isn't he? Ooh, I don't know how I feel about that. <sighs> all right. Two of five. Total score is 10, it's zero to zero. What are we gonna do? I'm gonna cooperate first. I'm gonna try and establish. Oh, dude, you didn't do it. Well, now I'm gonna cheat. Cheat again. Cheat 
cheating it. See? One distrust is all you need. You only need to do one thing to screw up the entire situation. Hello, my lady. If you are actually a lady, I can't see any genitals, I just see a hat, okay? And I don't mean to assume any genders here, but hi. Here, I have a thing. There we go. Great. So we just got a couple of coins. I'm gonna keep cooperating with her as long as she cooperates with me. As soon as she ruins that trust, we're out of here, you know? Or could I maybe cheat and try and get a better score? Let's try that and see what happens to them. Oh! Oh, get wrecked! <laughs> and now, she's not gonna play any... She is gonna keep playing. All right, well, she just got wrecked. That's good. <laughs> that is a nice hat, sir. I like it. Opponent, four out of five. My total score is 19. I guess I'm trying to see how good I can do or something. Let me cooperate with you, sir, because I want us to be on good terms here. Okay, great. And I'm assuming maybe he'll keep doing it. Yeah? This is good. See, this is what you want. This is what you want to just have a nice, friendly, everyone gets coins. Because as soon as you, as soon as you, um, break that trust, they're probably not going to want to play anymore. Now, the girl, she kept playing. All right, she, she didn't care. She was like, oh, he cheated, but that's okay. I'll just keep giving him coins. When I did it, I did not keep giving coins. I don't know when the last round is, so I can't try and get a one-up on him. Right? And am I trying to go against these people? Because I have a total score. I just want to make money. Right? So this person, Mr. Sherlock Holmes, here you go. Have a coin. Yay! So this is interesting because not a whole... Not a whole lot is happening, but I'm going to cheat now. Yeah, so now what? Now I'm gonna go back to cooperating with you, sir. Okay, so we had a one-up. Everything is better now. The trust has been reestablished because of the whole we're even, maybe. I don't know, let's just keep cooperating here. Okay, great. So we settled our differences. It's all good. Would've worked better if we just gave each other coins, but fine. Good. 10 each, you're still here. Let's keep going. Yeah, this is good stuff. This is good stuff. You see? The fact that he gave me a coin after cheating once showed me that maybe he had a little bit of remorse or something, you know? So I, I, I got back at him and everything was good. So my total score is 41, which is pretty good. The lowest and highest is 7 and 49. So I got almost the highest score. The highest I could get is taking all the coins away, but that would be, uh, that would be very nice. So who were the strange characters you just played against? So there's a copycat. Hello, I start with cooperate and afterwards I just copy whatever you did in the last round, meow. Uh, we've got the always cheat, the strong shall eat the weak. So that was that guy. I told you, man, it was his hat. It wasn't a good hat. I don't know, it was kind of a cool hat, but whatever. Uh, this lady will always cooperate. That's why I managed to take from her. We got the grudger. Listen, partner, I'll start cooperating and keep cooperating. But if y'all ever cheat on me, cheat me. <laughs> I'll cheat you back till the end of tarnation. And the detective, first they analyze you. They start, cooperate, cheat, cooperate, cooperate. If you cheat back, I'll act like copycat. If you never cheat back, I'll act like always cheat to exploit you. Elementary, my dear Watson. Uh, so what happens if these characters were to play against each other? So now we get to watch and see what they do. Okay. So you got some people who never trust, some people who have a lot of trust, you know? So it's a tournament. Each character will now play against every other character. That's 10 paired matches and 10 rounds per match. Who do you think will get the highest total score? Think carefully about it and then place your bets. Copycat. The copycat is going to do the best because they start with cooperate. And if you screw them, they will screw you back until you're even. Because that's what I did, right? Uh, when I got screwed, I decided I would cooperate after they got screwed so that we were even. So I think the copycat's going to do the best. Now, it would seem that maybe the cooperate would do the best. But if if, uh, if the detective goes up against her and she's cooperating, he's just going to take away from her. You know, that's just what he's going to do. Um, I'll cheat. I mean, they're going to catch on and they're going to start cheating too. He's only going to get a little bit. Grudger... He could do pretty good, you know? Uh, he starts to cooperate, he'll cooperate until you cheat, and then he'll always cheat. But the copycat will will stop cheating if you start cooperating again. So copycat is gonna win. All right, you placed your bet on copycat. Let's go through the, the matches one by one and see how the tournament plays out. First match. Okay, so copycat versus always cheat. Um, scores were minus one and plus three. Oh, by the way, by the way, what? What do you, what do you mean? So the copycat was um, cheated. And he, uh, he kept on cheating because the first guy cheated. But the, the, this guy, is he the one who always cheats? Yeah, okay. So the always cheater gets a small one up on that guy. But that's it, you know? If the copycat goes up against someone else, he'll do a lot better. 
Copycat versus always cooperate. He's gonna make 20 and 20. Pretty good. Uh, you may be skeptical about that Christmas true story about World War One trenches. Surely that was just a fluke. Hmm. Maybe it was. Copycat versus Grudger. He also makes 20. Good. Um, hmm. I'm wondering now. Is this... It, it, maybe the always cooperate is gonna win. You know? But if she goes up against some people, she's not gonna do as good. But I think maybe only this guy will really screw her over. So it might actually be her that wins. Next match. Oh crap, did I just miss something? Whatever. Not every trench joined in the piece, but it was pretty widespread. Many front lines came up with the idea independently and again, despite specific strict orders not to. All right, always cheat versus always cooperate. Uh, she actually got minus 10 there. And in fact, even before Christmas, several front lines already had established an unofficial secret piece. Hmm, interesting. So they were like, hey, Christmas, we're gonna chill. Look at how many points this guy's got. The copycat's got all the points. It's about reciprocity. It's about rewarding good behavior with more good behavior and evening out the odds. Like, that's what I did. I basically played as the copycat in a way. So let's go to the next match. Always cheat versus grudger. So the always cheat is gonna get plus three, but the grudger is not gonna let him have any more than that. Same thing with uh, the copycat, right? So he's not gonna do that great there. He's gonna get a little bit, but that's about it. And obviously he's gonna do well against the lady who always cooperates. They called it the live and let live system. Basically, you don't shoot me and I don't shoot you and this worked in a lot of places because they know that there's gonna be reciprocity. They know that you're gonna reciprocate whatever they do. If one person shoots, you all end up dead pretty much. Nobody wants that. You much rather play some football or whatever, you know? Uh, I don't know if they, they probably didn't have balls in the trenches, but they, I'm sure they had fun. Okay, <laughs> next match. So the always cheat versus the, versus the detective, the always cheat will win. You may still be skeptical. Most soldiers don't spontaneously form peace with the enemy. What's so special about trench warfare? Next match. Always cooperate versus grudger. They'll do okay, they'll get some points. Good stuff. Here's what's unique about the trenches. Unlike almost every other form of war, you have to face the same specific soldiers every day. Hmm, I didn't even think about that. So you gotta learn about these people in a way, right? They always cooperate versus the detective. Um, the detective's gonna do great. It's a repeated game and that makes all the difference. So yeah, she's always cooperating. As soon as he finds out that she's cooperating, he's gonna cheat. You know, he cheats, uh, well, hang on a second. So two and two, he cooperated, then he cheated. Uh, then he cooperated and cooperated because she was still cooperating. But then he realized that she was always gonna cooperate and then he cheated her a whole lot. Interesting. Now, Grudger versus detective, um, not that great because of the fact that he knows that if the detective tries to screw him over, he's just gonna give up. Drum roll, please. I already know who won. Copycat! Yeah, you place your bet on the right horse. I know how it works, guys. I got my thinker ready, okay? Yeah. Copycat goes by many names. The golden rule, reciprocal altruism. What did I say? Reciprocity, right? I took some philosophy in school, guys. Uh, it's very interesting stuff. There's so many weird situations. I mean, I did that game with the car and the self-driving car and the hitting people and killing dogs and uh, that was a little bit controversial, but it was really fun. Uh, tit for tat or live and let live. If you don't do anything to me, I won't do anything to you. You cooperate when I cooperate the first time and we have a great relationship going until you screw it up. And then you can actually make peace with me if you just cooperate again, then I'll just go back to cooperating with you. Good times. That's why peace could emerge in the trenches of World War I. When you're forced to play the same game with the same specific people, not just the same generic enemy over and over again, Copycat doesn't just win the battle, it wins the war. But if things change a lot when you play multiple rounds of the same game, what if we play multiple tournaments? Wait, how's that gonna work? Is it gonna be the same? Oh, well, not if you have things being different within the games. How's this? Okay, let's say our population of players evolve over time. It's a three-step dance. So you play a tournament. Let's uh, let them all play against each other and tally up the scores. So the people who always cheat versus the people who always cooperate. The cheaters will always do good they will always take advantage of people who are always nice. But you don't wanna always be nice. You got a copycat now and then. And repeat, for as long as you'd like, you don't have to wait for people to literally die and reproduce for culture to evolve. All that's needed is that unsuccessful behavior goes away and successful behaviors are imitated. So now, so I guess they decided to always cheat because they learned that the only way to get ahead is to cheat. You won't even get ahead, technically. 
the only thing you're gonna do is you're just gonna you're just gonna have zero at the end but it's better than losing and that's what these ladies decided on instead of losing I'll become a man and male privilege lets me win not really not at all <laughs> All right, so, so we start with the following population of players. 15 always cooperates, five always cheats, and five copycats. We ignore Grudger and Detective for now because they're complicated, right? They're complicated dudes. We're gonna do the tournament, eliminate, reproduce, dance a dozen times or so. So let's make another bet. Who do you think will win the first tournament? Place your bets again. Well, uh, most of the people here are cooperators, right? So I think that the uh, all cheats are probably gonna win because um, they're gonna make the most money off those people. Makes sense. Always cheat has a lot of always cooperates to exploit. Let's see if you're correct. So uh, play tournament. So who won the first round? Because that's what they said, right? Just winning the first round of the tournament. And it looks like these guys did win the first round, which is what I predicted. So we eliminate the bottom five, which are going to be the always cooperates because they get screwed over. Goodbye. Okay. And now we reproduce the top five, which is the cheaters. Huh? Sadly, you were correct. The always cheaters won this time and their numbers increase by five. Let's try a few more rounds of this. So what's gonna happen now? Now it's gonna be a little bit um, closer to the copycat, I suppose. Uh, they're not gonna have much of a lead, maybe none at all. It really depends. We need more copycats. Play the tournament. Okay, so they're still winning. Sadly, you were correct. The Always Cheater won this time. The numbers increase by five. Eliminate the bottom five. Reproduce the top five. Always Cheat is still growing at the expense of Always Cooperate. The, the copycat is not being taken away here. So we play the tournament. And we eliminate the bottom five, and we're left with always cheat. And now, all the always cooperates are dead, but wait. Ooh, what's this? What just happened here? Now, okay, so, so we eliminate the bottom five, but how did they win? So the copycat, isn't he gonna cooperate once and then cheat, 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 cheat? They have each other. The copycats have each other, that's the thing. I was thinking, you're gonna screw it all up because now there's so little of you and so many of them, but since they have each other, when they play with each other, they do okay. Because there's a lot of lines here, guys. Look at that thing, that's crazy. It was a big old thing. All right, eliminate the bottom five. And then reproduce the top five. And we have half and half. That's right, the always cheats became a victim of their own success because there's only so long that you can refuse to help other people before you get no help yourself, okay? So remember that, being selfish doesn't always help you, okay? And being nice to people all the time doesn't always help either. Be nice to the people who are nice to you and try and grow together. That's what we're learning here, guys. They exploited the naive always cooperators, but once they ran out of them, they had to face the copycats who are nice, but not naive, and they will help each other, and they will make sure that you get screwed out of everything. Now, you notice they only had like 24, because they played against five copycats, and they'll cooperate first, so they got three coins from each of those. That doesn't add up, does it? Whatever, there's so something about that there. <laughs> All right. So now these guys are really doing bad. They're not making any money. So we eliminate them, reproduce, okay? By simply copying the other player's moves, copycats can play nice with each other while always cheat, just cheat themselves. Not only that, but it also means copycat can give always cheat a taste of their own medicine. I love this, guys, because screw cheaters, man. I hate cheaters. Cheaters and thieves and all those people who just, they don't play nice. Reproduce top five. Oh, there's only two left. And as a result, what's gonna happen here? These guys are gonna become copycats. They are going to cooperate. So now some of the copycats were gone as well, but that's just how it works because we had no other choice. Reproduce the top five. We're all copycats and we've inherited the earth. Imagine that. So in the short run, you were right. Always cheat won the first few rounds, but in the end, its exploitativeness was its downfall. This reminds me of a quote. We are punished by our sins, not for them. Okay, sure. Oh, and by the way, this result is similar even if we put Grudger and Detective back in. Because Grudger and Detective don't make the most money. Copycats make the most because they help each other and they help anyone who helps them. The Detective will eventually get back on the right track with the copycats because they do cooperate, cheat, cooperate, cooperate. So after you do that a couple times, the copycats will cooperate back and they'll realize, okay, these guys want to make me money. Good. Uh, and the grudgers, obviously, they're not going to have a problem with these guys. They'll be nice until you're not nice to them. So start the evolution process. Look at that. They just disappear. They, 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 they disappear over time and then we're left with just copycats. Uh, and it's just going to keep going, which is cool. All right. Well, permanent evolution of just that. Sometimes a few grudgers may stick around because when all players except grudger and copycat are eliminated, the two tie. But since eventually you, gotta just, you just gotta eliminate the bottom five, even if they're all the same. So they will eventually statistically get removed. 
But yeah, if you just have grudgers and copycats, they'll just be the same. Uh, so it seems the math of game theory is telling us something. That copycats' philosophy do unto others as you would have them do unto you may not just be a moral truth, but also a mathematical truth. However, I mean, this is a very, this is a very isolated incident right here. There's a problem. Oh, fart noise, that's the problem. Okay, look around. The world's full of total jerkwads. If copycat is the strategy in this repeated game of trust that's so powerful, even soldiers in World War II... World War One trenches independently evolved a similar strategy called live and let live. Why then are there so many untrusting, untrustworthy people? What's causing the epidemic of untrust? I would say it's the fact that you don't know who you're gonna get. You don't know what kind of person this is. And once you get burned so many times, you just get really cynical and you become them. You copy what they do because you're in the bottom five now. You have to have enough trust to get the ball rolling, I guess. A clue's in the sentence itself. In this repeated game of trust, so far we've only talked about change in the players. What about a change in the game? What could lead to the evolution of distrust? So yeah, the game. If the game is changed, obviously we're going to have some issues because you need to both benefit and you need to have that going on. Before everything goes to heck, let's start with something nice. Here's a world filled entirely with always cooperates except for one always cheat and one copycat. Use the buttons on the right to start the sim and go through it step by step or reset it. So this is gonna be a bit weird because I'm pretty sure these people are going to become the bad people because they're too nice right now and they're gonna, they're gonna eventually realize that cheating is the way to success or something. Let's start. Okay, no, it's good. It's good. We're actually getting some people becoming the copycats as well, and eventually they disappear. Good. As you already know, copycat wins handily in the long run under our current rules. That's under our current rules, which say that players play against each other for 10 rounds per match. Does copycat still win at 7? 5, 3, 2, 1. Hmm. Change the number of rounds with the slider below and start the sim and see what happens. Feel free to experiment. Okay, so let's try it. What's like, let's try with 3. So with 3, we're going we're gonna to have these guys winning, right? Well, what's, what the hell's happening? Continue. Huh? As you saw, if you don't play enough rounds, always cheat dominates. Oh, okay, I get it. Because you have to, yeah, you have to cooperate with each other and make money and stuff. In 1985, when Americans were asked how many close friends they had, the most common answer was three. In 2004, the most common answer was zero. We now have fewer friends across class, racial, economic, and political lines because we have fewer friends, period. And as you just discovered for yourself, the fewer repeat interactions there are, the more distrust will spread. No, mass media doesn't count. It must be two-way interaction between specific individuals. Okay, uh, reset that, because just, just chill. And it gets worse. There's another way to breed distrust. Here are the payoffs for the trust game. Yes, the normal payoffs copycat wins, but now change the both cooperate reward from two to one, then click start. Oh no, in that case, you either lose one or you gain one. So now you got a really big issue here where cooperating is not worth it anymore because these guys are gonna end up losing. Even though plus one is still more than punishment for both cheating, what happens? Well, let's see. Look at that. They still won. Or did I, or is this the same thing again? Hold on a second, continue. Same thing happens, okay. With a lower win-win reward, always cheat takes over. Game theory has has two powerful ideas about this. Oh wait, hang on a second. All right guys, I'm a little bit confused here, so I just wanna explain why I'm confused. It's saying the same thing happens with a lower win-win reward, always cheat takes over, but if you actually do the thing on the side, um, copycat takes over. So I, I don't think this is the right simulation showing here. Let's just move on. Zero sum game. This is a sadly common belief that a gain for us must come in a loss to them and vice versa. So you're saying you can't have both. And there's the non-zero sum. So these are the game theory, two powerful ideas in game theory. Uh, the the non-zero sum game. This is when people make the hard effort to create a win-win solution or at least avoid a lose-lose. Without the non-zero sum game, trust cannot evolve. Yeah, because I mean, if you don't help each other, then you can only help yourself makes sense. Speaking of which, now uh, let's look at our third and final barrier to the evolution of trust. Mistakes. As cool as copycat is, it has a huge fatal weakness I haven't mentioned yet. To understand the problem, let's say two copycats are playing against each other. Uh, being nice players, both of them first, both of the first moves will be cooperate. So they get, they get coins. And normally they just pay back each other's kindness and sing kumbaya until the end of time. 
Mistakes, miscommunication, misinterpretations, accidents happen all the time in real life. So in that case, since they can't really see each other, he doesn't know what happened. He just knows that something screwed it up. And maybe he said, maybe, maybe he just doesn't trust his explanation for it. Maybe they can talk to each other and he says, sorry, I fell down. And they say, no, you didn't. You're a liar. You just want to steal from me. What now? But if the other person doesn't think it was an accident, then he's going to take it away. You know? So now you've been punished for an accident you had, and that's not good either. That's going to make you sad. So, um, uh, the pl other player being a copycat had to retaliate, and you being a copycat as well will also have to retaliate. Oh, so this is where it gets crazy. So now you've established so much distrust that you'll never get it back. Now everyone's cheating, right? What? what, what? Oh. Yeah, this is cool. So now they're doing whatever was done last round by the other person. So they're still making money, right? It's still three and one. Thus, like the Hatfields and McCoys, these two copycats will spiral into an endless cycle of vengeance that started over a single mistake a long time ago. But what if they make a mistake again? If they make a mistake again, they could um, be in a constant cycle of nothing. Or, uh, well, eventually, then it would make a mistake and go back the other way. But you could also make a mistake and accidentally put it in, and then all of a sudden you're both cooperating again. That's interesting. Uh, tragic, but now, are there other types of players who can deal with mistakes? Hmm. Yes, there would be, right? I mean, hmm. Let's meet some new faces, or new hats, anyway. All right, I hope you guys are enjoying this video. Uh, I know this is a, a bit of a, a bit more of a philosophical kind of thing, and it's a bit longer, but I'm having fun reading all this stuff, so I hope you guys are, too. Uh, okay, so new faces. We got Copy Kitten. I'm like Copy Cat, except I cheat back only after you cheat me twice in a row. Okay, so they're forgiving. After all, the first one could be a mistake. Per, Oh, how sweet. Uh, and then there's a simpleton. I try to start, I try, start, cooperate. If you cooperate back, I do same thing as last move, even if it mistake. If you cheat back, I do opposite thing as last move, even if it mistake. What? Okay, so I think they have like a system where if you do something bad to them, they just switch what they're doing. That's what it is. They switch, and then if you keep doing bad, they'll switch again until they get the right thing. And then there's a random. There's a monkey, robot, ninja, pizza, tacos, lol, I'm so random, purple monkey, dishwasher, am I right? Just plays cheat or cooperate randomly with a 50-50 chance. Let's see how these peeps do when they play in a tournament. This is gonna be fun. So let's start with the does. Oh, there's all kinds of people here now. Okay. A dozen always cooperates versus our old winner, the fair copycat, and our new three characters, the forgiving copy kitten, the dull simpleton, and the silly random. In each round of a match, players have a small chance of making a mistake, let's say 5%. Who do you think will come out on top? Think carefully and then place your bets. Hmm. I'm gonna say Copy Kitten because there are now mistakes. That's kind of why they introduced Copy Kitten because it's someone who can kind of um, make up for that. Starts with cooperate, only retaliates it with a cheat if you cheated it twice in a row. But maybe the simpleton is better here. You know, because the simpleton, uh, he's gonna flip uh, depending on if you cheat him, and then if you if you cooperate again, he'll flip back or something. I don't know. He, him, he's a bit weird. If you cooperate the last round, it repeats the last move, even if it was an accident. Uh, but if you cheated in the last round, it switches its last move, even if it was an accident. Okay, so copy kitten. I'm gonna say copy kitten, and we'll see what happens. All right, you bet copy kitten wins. Let's find out. Use the controls to start to, to your left to start the sim in quick mode, or go through it step by step. Uh, let's go step by step. So who got the most there? Hmm. Uh, so it looks like, geez. So it looks like Copy Kitten didn't do as good as the random. Well, the random is good because of these guys, right? But it's gonna get different. So if we keep going, they get eliminated. And then I'd say as the, as the always cooperates go away, we should have more in favor of the Copy Kitten instead of in favor of random because he's just randomly doing things to cooperate and winning. Step. So this time, hmm. All right, what's, okay, they're gone. I'm not really sure what's gonna happen here, man. Oh, shit, the copy kittens are leaving me. It's the simpletons who are winning. I thought maybe that would be the case because of the fact that they have a different uh, method here. They have a different method of fixing mistakes. All right, look at that. There you go. Start that and get rid of that and bye bye Your bet was close, but no cigar. Simpleton wins because Simpleton is actually capable of exploiting. Always cooperate. Hmm. They both start cooperating, but if Simpleton makes a mistake and cheats, always cooperate, never retaliates, and it'll keep cheating them. Hmm. Now let's try. The same thing as before, except instead of half always cooperate, it's half always cheat. It's a much less forgiving, more hostile environment. Who do you think will win now? 
think, then place your bets. So the simpletons are gonna flip back and forth between cooperating and not cooperating, because that's how they work. So they will get exploited by these guys, but the copy kittens will stop getting exploited after the second round. So let's go with copy kitten this time and we'll see. I'm just gonna go ahead and start it and we'll see what happens. Bam, 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 copy kittens stay in here, cool stuff. And since mistakes are being made, guys, only the copy kitten is able to forgive those mistakes. And the copy cat decides as soon as you make a mistake, that means that you wanted to hurt them. But since it's only a 5% chance, for the most part, there isn't double mistakes happening. And you, you can see that it's kind of fighting back and forth here. But I would imagine eventually the copycats will go away. Three left. Three left again. Four left. Five left. Jeez, I don't know, man. Okay, so you ran the money. Copycat wins this time. That's surprising that with an e even meaner starting population, Copycat and a more forgiving version of Copycat was the most successful. Okay, so Copy Kitten is so forgiving it doesn't even entirely wipe out Copy Cat. It shares room. That's kind of cool, actually. In this case, a bit of miscommunication, 5% chance of mistake each round could lead to more forgiveness, but is this true for all levels of miscommunication? Use the slider below to change the amount of miscommunication, then hit start. So at 5%, Copy Kitten wins. What happens at 0% or 20% or 50%? It only goes up to 50 because at that point, every move is a coin flip. Okay, during each round, there's a 5% chance a player makes a mistake. So I think at a 5%, we already know what's going to happen. But if we bring it up to 10, more mistakes, um, we're still going to be forgiven. But if there's too many, these guys are going to get wiped out because they're going to start withholding their cooperation if it's twice in a row. Twice in a row is going to get more likely as you bring up the odds here. So what happens at 10%? I would imagine probably the... Oh, they're gone. Okay, so at 10%, it's enough. It is enough for them to uh, make enough mistakes to just die. Well, let's go up all the way to 40%. So these guys are going to win because they cheat. And it's easier to cheat when you have a higher chance of failure. Now, if you have 2%, the copy kittens are probably going to win again, right? Yeah, no problem. Okay. Yeah, and, and, and the fact that it's only 2% means they're not going to make enough mistakes that they're going to get pushed out by the copy kittens. Continue. Okay, the result turns out something like this. At 0%, the fair copycat wins. At 1-9%, to uh, forgiving copy kitten wins. And at 10-49, to 49, the unfair, unforgiving, always cheat wins. At 50%, nobody wins ever. Okay, cool. This is why miscommunication is such an interesting barrier to trust. A little bit of it leads to forgiveness, but too much, and it leads to widespread distrust. Okay, I think our modern media technology, as much as it's helped us increase communication, has increased our miscommunication much more. Texting, man, who knows what you're really trying to say when you say Lamau? You know, what, what does that mean? <laughs> At last, let's experiment with all the numbers, the knobs and sliders, let's play. Sandbox mode, so now you can do whatever the hell you want. Oh my God, geez, let's just start the way it is. Payoffs are gonna be the same. You can change whatever you want here, guys. I encourage you to do it. Go to the description, play this game yourself and see what you think of it. See if you if you wanna like play around with the sandbox yourself and, and find out what kind of things make people win and lose. That's cool. This is just all standard, three people. There's four randoms just to make up the, um, the full amount and random is the best one to put in there rather than another person person to offset everything because random is just random you know whatever it's a coin flip and that's what 50 percent is and that's why everyone loses so anyway let's start it here i'm imagining uh if the uh if there's a five percent then the copy kittens are probably gonna win eventually yeah it's happening look at that no the simpletons maybe oh, are you gonna push us out here simpletons oh jesus okay so with everyone playing uh simpletons win Okay, same box bonus, totally optional. Feel free to skip it or play around. Once you're done, let's recap. I'm not gonna mess around with this too much because obviously this is already a long video and uh, some people are probably asleep by now, but this interests me, okay. So game theory has shown us the three things we need for the evolution of trust. Repeat interactions. Trust keeps a relationship going, but you need the knowledge of possible future repeat interactions before trust can evolve. You need to know that they're gonna be there for you again and again, right? You need to know that your friend is gonna have your back no matter what kind of thing. Possible win-wins. You must be playing a non-zero-sum game, a game where it's at least possible that both players can benefit off a win-win. Um, and I guess that kind of is how it works anyway. If you do something for someone, they'll probably do something back. Um, that's the way we tend to you know, do our thing, you know, reciprocating when someone does something nice. That is a win-win situation. And low miscommunication. If the level of miscommunication is too high, trust breaks down. But when there's a little bit of miscommunication, it pays to be more forgiving. If there's just a little bit, it's enough to forgive, but if it's too much, it, it really gets to you. And that's funny, guys, and I'll talk about why in a second. Of course, real-world trust is affected by much more than this. There's reputation, shared values, contracts, cultural markers, blah, blah, blah. And let's not forget the biggest lesson 
If there's one big takeaway from all of the game theory, it's this. What the game is defines what the players do. Our problem today isn't just that people are losing trust, it's that our environment acts against the evolution of trust. This may seem cynical or naive that we're merely products of our environment, but as game theory reminds us, we are each, each other's environment. In the short run, the game defines the players, but in the long run, it's us players who define the game. So, do what you can do to create the conditions necessary to evolve trust. Build relationships, find win-wins, communicate clearly. Maybe then we can stop firing at each other, get out of our own trenches, cross no man's land to come together and all learn. To live and let live. And there's the Christmas truce between opposing trenches, illustrated by A.C. Michael, published in the Illustrated London News, January 9th, 1915. Little heart thing. All right, man. What a trip, eh? What a, what a, what an experience. So what I was gonna say, guys, what's funny about that, and um, I think about this a lot because, I mean, nobody likes to talk about politics too much because politics is a bit of a crazy, very crazy world, you know? But when it comes to politics, what do you have? You have people who think that you are someone that you're not. If you, if you meet someone on one side of the fence and someone on the other side of the fence, they automatically assume that you think a certain way. And there's a lot of miscommunication. If you type something out on the internet, they will find the miscommunication there and they will use that to create distrust. And it happens everywhere. Look online, look at your favorite political website, whatever, and read what people say. And you will, you will notice that a lot of what happens is subjective. People take a certain thing and they assume you're saying a certain thing and there's distrust because of that. Because it's probably greater than 10% miscommunication, right? Miscommunication is greater than 10%. Tons of miscommunication on the internet. It's text. There's no real emotion in there. And if you miscommunicate enough, you just distrust each other. And that's why there's so much conflict right now on the internet when it comes to politics. That's why blank supporters hate blank supporters and vice versa. Because we're not working together. Because the government is not a win-win situation, is it? It's, it, it, does, it doesn't work like that. You either have people trying to do one thing or you have people trying to do the other. And if there was more win-win, when it comes to debates online, there would be more fair debates and more people trusting each other. And there would be an evolution of trust. So that's as political as I'm going to get. I'm not going to actually talk about my political preferences. I just think that when it comes to politics these days, people don't really listen to each other. They love miscommunication because it allows you to distrust someone. And for some reason, people like to distrust each other. I don't know. Whatever. This is the evolution of trust, guys. Really cool. Check it out if you want. Link down below in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.